If you're frustrated by all these AI subscriptions piling up and draining your pocket every month, I get it. And that's probably the reason why you're evaluating open art. You want a smooth workflow with all the tools in one place, without having the constant tool changing, slowing you down, juggling multiple logins and subscriptions, or losing time exporting and transferring files between platforms. So I've spent the last year using open art for projects and testing it against the individual platforms I was paying for separately. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly where open art wins whether the cost savings are real or exaggerated, and whether you should consolidate your subscriptions or stick with what you're using now. By the end, you'll know if OpenArt fits your workflow or if the approach of accessing tools natively is better. If you want to follow along, I'll leave a link to OpenArt in the description down below. Let's get right into it. So when you first log into OpenArt, you'll see a lot of options, which can seem intimidating, but I'll make it easier for you. Let's start with video generation, because this is where OpenArt's value proposition is strongest. Here on the left-hand side, you can see the video tab with a camera icon on it. Let's click on that. This opens the video workflow and right away you'll see options for text to video, image to video, elements to video, video upscaling and many more useful tools all compiled into one section. So let's test the quality and see if there's any trade-off compared to using these models natively on their original platforms. Click on text to video. We can access the model selector by clicking it on the top right of the window right here and it opens up a wide range of video models to choose from. The big advantage of open art is the huge range of model accessibility. OpenArt offers popular state-of-the-art models like VO3, Sora 2, and Cdance 1.0, all in one place. I'll select Google VO3 because it's probably the most in-demand model right now. Now, on OpenArt, each model has its unique settings. Here, you can select the version of the model, keep the audio on or off, pick your desired resolution, change the aspect ratio of your video, and select your desired video mode. In the prompt section, I'm going to paste in my prompt, a futuristic hover bike chase weaving through neon sky skyscrapers at night, dynamic camera motion, intense energy, detailed reflections, ultra cinematic action. Before generating, I'm going to enable the auto enhance feature. This is a super handy tool that saves you a ton of time by automatically refining your prompt and doing the hard work for you. Instead of tweaking wording, adding extra details, or guessing what the AI needs, auto enhance adjusts everything behind the scenes to get the best possible result from the model, making your workflow faster, smoother, and much more reliable. And let's hit create. Here's the result. This is such a good output, and it feels like a real video. The motion is smooth, the lighting is natural, and the cinematic feel is intact. What's important here is that it shows open art isn't compressing or limiting the models. The video models are still running at full potential, and you get that same powerful performance right within this interface. Now, let's test the image to video option with a different model and see if open art can hold up to expectations. From the left side, we can click on the image to video option. Let's select Cdance 1.0 from the model dropdown, and I'm going to upload this photograph of a city street at night. For the prompt, I'll use this one I prepared. Camera slowly pushes forward down the street. Car headlights pass by. Neon signs flicker. Rain reflects on the pavement. For the additional setting, I'll recommend setting the quality mode as pro for best results, and you can choose the video duration anywhere from 5 to 10 seconds. I'll set this to 5 seconds and click create. And here's what I got, and this is absolutely stunning. The motion is smooth, the environmental details like rain and reflections are convincing, and the overall aesthetic is exactly what you'd expect. Personally, I like using VO3 when I want ultra-realistic videos with natural motion and cinematic lighting, while Cdance 1.0 is my go-to for more stylized, artistic, or cinematic effects. Both are powerful, and which one I pick really depends on the style I'm aiming for in the project. Now here's where open art adds value beyond just model access. Once your video is generated, you can upscale it directly on the platform. I'll show you how to do that. Click on the video which you just generated, and on the bottom right, you'll see an option called Video Upscale. Click that. This will open up a new workflow where you can select the resolution you want to upscale your video to. We can upscale our video all the way up to 4K. We can also increase the frame rate of our video in the frame interpolation tab, adding extra frames to make motion smoother all the way up to 120 frames per second. Upscaling is an incredibly helpful feature for social media and YouTube content. Even if the original video is low resolution, I can bump it up to full HD or 4K, add text or effects, and it still looks sharp and professional on any platform, on runway or native clink. If you you want to upscale your video, you'd need to export it, bring it into a separate upscaling tool like Topaz, and then re-render. Having this built in the UI of OpenArt is really a massive workflow advantage. Now you've also got this element to video tool up here, and it's surprisingly flexible. You can upload up to seven still images, and the system will stitch them together into a moving sequence. It's not something I rely on every day, but the creative possibilities are insane. If you're the type who likes experimenting with transitions, concept reels, or stylized motion pieces, this can turn a 
static image pack into something way more dynamic. At the last tab, here's a really brand new feature introduced on OpenArt, which is video to video. Unlike standard video generation tools, this tool actually lets you edit your video. You upload your original clip to set the motion and then can upload up to four reference images. This means you can show the AI exactly what you want to change. You can swap a character's outfit, change the background or insert a specific product, all while keeping the original movement perfectly intact. Also, there's an audio panel on the bottom side as add audio to video. Think of it as your final touch area. If you need quick background audio or want your AI clips to feel more complete before exporting, this section handles that. But the standout here is the lip sync tool. You can upload a voice recording, yours, a client's, whatever, and the model will match the character's mouth movements to that audio automatically. It's one of those features that instantly makes your footage feel alive, especially when you're turning spoken lines into generated visuals. Now outside of the video features, I actually use OpenArt quite a bit for image generation too. To access the image generation feature, click on the image tab on the left side and this window with a lot of options will open up. Press create image here on the left side and you're on the image generation workflow. The first thing you'll notice is the model selector. OpenArt gives you access to over 100 image models. You've got Flux, Nano Banana, Juggernaut, Dolly 3, Stable Diffusion Variants and dozens of others. You can access all of them easily by just clicking on them and you don't need to download a separate tool or go to a separate website. Now let's test whether having more models actually leads to better and more favorable results. I'm going to take one prompt and run it through different models and see how they turn out. First, I'm choosing Google's Nano Banana Pro. I'm going to paste in my prompt a modern minimalist coffee shop interior, large windows with natural light, wooden furniture, plants, clean aesthetic, photorealistic. I'll turn on auto enhance and set the aspect ratio to landscape. Also down below, when generating images, we can also choose how many outputs we want. This is actually more important than it seems. Sometimes you need variety to pick the best composition, lighting or mood. Generating multiple images at once gives you different interpretations of the same prompt. So instead of rewriting or tweaking your prompt over and over, you can instantly compare several options and choose the strongest one for your project. Let's click create and here are the results and they are really amazing. Nano Banana produced incredibly realistic images with really sharp details and natural lighting. Also the colors are really vibrant and looks good to the eyes. Now let's switch models. I'll go with Juggernaut, which is open source and widely considered one of the most realistic models available. Same prompt, same settings. Click create. And here's the result. Juggernaut's output is also photorealistic, but with slightly different color grading. The lighting is a bit warmer and the overall mood is slightly more cinematic. This shows open art's real strength, which is flexibility. You can test the same prompt across multiple models in minutes and instantly see which look fits your project. Now, if you feel like your image is 90% there and just need a bit of touch-ups, you don't have to regenerate from scratch. On OpenArt, you can actually do this very easily by selecting your generated image. So I click this image and I can click on this option right here. And this takes me to an entire workflow to edit the image. And here's where one of my favorite tools comes in, InPaint. Instead of rewriting the whole prompt, you can simply brush over the part you want to change and update only that section. Whether you want to remove an object, add something new or adjust a detail, InPaint lets you fix specific areas without touching the rest of the image. Let's say I want to add a coffee cup on this table. I select the InPaint tool, highlight the area where I want the object to appear and type in the prompt, a white ceramic coffee cup on the table. Select a model. I usually go with a premium option for best results and click create. The AI analyzes the surrounding context and places the coffee cup naturally into the scene. Another tool worth mentioning is the remove tool. This is great for getting rid of unwanted objects. For example, if I want to remove this plant in the background, I just highlight it and hit magic erase. It takes a few seconds longer because the AI analyzes and rebuilds the background, but the result is almost seamless. You can barely tell anything was ever there. And just like with videos, you can also upscale images. We can do this by selecting the image and clicking on the ultimate upscale button on the bottom right. This opens up a new workflow and here you can upscale your images to higher resolutions. Now let's talk about character consistency because this is the feature that makes open art shine even more. It is the characters feature. To access it, we have to select it from the left panel. And once you click it, it'll open a new workflow. Here you can create a consistent character that maintains the same appearance across multiple images. You have three options. Start with a description, start with one image or start with four or more images. In most cases, I recommend using four or more images if you have them because it gives the best accuracy. But for this video, I'll start with one image. I'll upload this portrait and name the character Alex. Click create character. Open art processes this for a couple of minutes, training a character model based on the reference image. Once processing is complete, you can generate Alex in any scenario while maintaining consistent facial features. Let me test this. Click into the prompt and reference section to open the generation workflow. In the prompt field, 
style type Alex standing on a rooftop overlooking a city at sunset you can adjust character weight which controls how strictly the AI maintains the character's features and prompt adherence which controls how closely the AI follows your written prompt I'll keep both around the middle for a balanced result as it is a good balance between creativity and consistency click create and as you can see Alex's facial features hair and overall appearance are identical to the reference image but the environment has completely changed this is incredibly valuable for storytelling comic creation or any project where you need the same character across multiple scenes. Next, let's move on to the audio feature. Unlike the audio option in the video workflow, this is a dedicated audio section where you can generate voiceovers for anything. It runs on the 11 Labs model, so the results are really high quality. To access it, click on the audio tab from the left sidebar. You can type in any line of text. For this example, I'll use this. Open Art combines image generation, video creation, and audio tools in one platform. Below the text field, you can choose from dozens of voices. You can filter by accent, gender, age, or use case. I'll select this voice right here. Now you can adjust two important settings here, stability and speed. Stability controls variation between generations. Lower stability gives you more natural variation. Higher stability gives you consistent delivery. I keep mine around 0.6 for a good balance. Speed controls how fast the line is spoken. I keep mine at 1.0 because that sounds most natural. Click create and here's the result. Open art combines image generation, video creation and audio tools in one platform. The result came out sounding fantastic, smooth, natural and so realistic that it feels like a real human voice. I use this audio feature almost every day. Whether I'm creating quick drafts or polishing videos, it saves me from recording my own voiceovers and speeds up my editing process considerably. So let's return to the main question. Is open art actually worth buying in 2026? And the answer would be definitely. Right now, you're probably doing one of two things. Either you're paying for multiple AI subscriptions and constantly switching between them, or you're limiting yourself to just one or two tools because paying for everything separately would be too expensive and would wouldn't make sense. Both of those situations cost you something. The first costs you time. The second costs you flexibility. Open art fixes both problems at once. Look at the numbers. If you are currently subscribed to the standard mid journey plan at $30, the runway pro plan at $35 and the 11 labs creator plan at $22, you are spending $87 per month just to maintain your baseline tools. Open art's advanced plan is $29 per month. That gives you access to all those capabilities plus more models for a third of the price. That is a $58 difference every single month, which adds up to nearly $700 a year back in your pocket. But the real value isn't just the money, it's the workflow. When everything lives in one platform, you stop losing 10 minutes here and 15 minutes there, moving files around, waiting for uploads, switching tabs, and managing credits across different systems. Those minutes add up to hours every month. And if you bill hourly or you're working on deadlines, those hours are worth more than the subscription cost. So here's what I recommend. Click the link in the description, grab the free credits, and run it against your current tools. Once you actually feel the difference of having your entire studio in one ecosystem, you won't want to go back to the tab switching workflow slowing you down. The link is down in the description. Go check it out and I'll see you in the next one.